Good morning, everyone. Steve and Jim and Luna the dog back here at, uh, she's chewing on the, uh, the camera mount. Yeah. We are back here on a Tuesday morning, uh, early May. Can't believe it's May already. It's going to be June before we know it. Uh, we're at the yard here getting ready to load up with some black mulch. I think we have to do roughly 24 to 28 yards of black mulch. So we're going to start off loading up about 12 and uh, knock out a first couple jobs. And we have one big job at the end that's going to be roughly the 12 to 15. So we'll get the two first uh, two jobs done first, I guess you could say, with 12 yards. And then we will come back and get another 12 and see how long that takes us. But uh, it's a little bit before 7 o'clock, so we're going to use the small loader. It's a little bit quieter uh, so we can load up and get on out of here. Yeah. Luna came along today. We also had the F450. It's been out of action for what six seven days yeah it needed a, it was leaking uh power steering fluid right it yeah, wasn't yeah it wasn't brake fluid it was power steering fluid you can see it's a little wet here but it was leaking through the hydro boost 23 years of life it took a crap and was uh <clears throat> leaking into the cab we replaced the hydro boost and had to bleed the power steering system again uh and also our flashers weren't working there's a there's a little relay underneath here which is probably up on the dash somewhere that's over here. Yeah. Little flasher relay. For the blinkers and... And uh, you think about all the stops every week, put the hazards yeah. on, this thing will go bad eventually. Like we're going to take the keys out so she doesn't lock us out of the truck. So Steve will load us up here. He knows how to run all the machines at this guy's yard. Yeah, I'd love to either use... That's a yard bucket. That's a yard bucket. I'd rather use the, the big, huge cat loader. I don't think that's here, though. That's a four-yard bucket. It would take three scoops. Yeah put about 12 scoops or we let, if we overflow the bucket we usually put 9 or 10 in and it comes right out the 12 so about 10 more of those to load up or so and then we'll get out of here we're gonna go get food real quick uh, we're gonna drop the dog off and then we're gonna get to the job the first job is just gonna it's bare basics uh, just plain Jane we're gonna use the wheelbarrows and stuff and mulch it nothing crazy it's stuff that you guys have already seen on the channel a bunch of times so we're not gonna show you guys the whole thing but we'll bring you guys along for the first two, show you guys the after results, of course, and show you kind of a little bit of what we're doing here today. Uh, we'll check in with you guys once we get uh, to the first house. All right, here we are at the first job, just wrapping up. We did all that, we did the front garden beds. Just got this little bit left. We're doing it with the wheelbarrows. Did the little bit in the back. Here's what the truck looks like. Almost empty, a little bit more than we actually thought. Had to go a little bit thicker in some spots, but let's get this one wrapped up completely. We will move on to the next one. All right, we just got that one all wrapped up. We're heading out to uh, back into uh, town because this is an out of town property that we do. Uh, one time a year for the mulch, they're a repeat customer, so we like them. Um, they always come back, they're loyal customers, so we do appreciate that. I think this uh, is the fifth season. Yeah. Fifth or sixth in a row. And you, as you can see, we use nothing but wheelbarrows and pitchforks. And I know we make a lot of videos on the Toro Multiforce, but for for example like that, you, you don't need all the fancy equipment to get the job done. And we just made pretty good profit there. Um, so it, it turns out well. We didn't need to, to lug the whole machine over here. So you don't need all that crazy stuff if you're just getting started in business. Uh, even though we make the video on it, like everybody needs to have one because it is a great machine. We will be using it later today. But, yeah. Uh, in terms of dragging the trailer up here, of course we need a trailer unless we can somehow fit these trucks up to fit the Toro in the back almost like the uh, fertilizer guys do. Yeah. That's what I'd love to do, but uh, we probably could have used it for like the six wheelbarrows all the way in the backyard, but by the time you bring the trailer up here and unhook the trailer, it's not worth it. Yeah. So, anyways. 
We are going to head back into town. We have a small one, and then probably by that time it'll be getting close to lunch. To hit lunch up. Uh, need more mulch. So. Yeah, we're gonna need. We're gonna definitely need more mulch because we're uh, we're already starting to run out. But that's all right. That means that we're eating it up pretty quick, and we're doing a good job. So. All right, here we are at the next job. Wasn't planning on doing this one today, but here we are. You'll notice the mulch is on the ground and it's not in the truck. This house is, uh, we're not doing the black mulch here. We're doing this whole pile right here. You'll notice why is because the mulch yard's right across the street. You can see over there, a uh, big mulch yard right there. So the guy just drives it and delivers it and puts it here. Usually we do not do it this way. We don't have the, uh, the customers get delivered. We don't like working off the ground like this because you got to bend over and uh, pitchfork it off the ground and lift it. We don't like doing that. It's more labor. Uh, so we do it this way out of the truck, as you saw. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, to sum it up is, yeah, this is the only customer that we'll ever do this for because it's good people. Um, it's funny, we don't use this mulch yard because they only accept check, cash or check. They don't take credit card. Um, I don't really know if I don't think they updated that since last year because every time you go in there you got to write them a check out of your bank account uh, we pay for everything with the business credit card so uh, that's pretty much the only reason we the mulch is fine that's the only reason we don't go there yeah yeah they have some good mulch uh, it's a big yard too they got hundreds and hundreds of yards of mulch yeah. in there them in the past when I was younger when I was just getting my license I didn't have a business credit card like I said no problems with the mulch it's just you don't take a business credit card yeah so uh we got this hot water heater actually we picked that up that's just for scrap metal so we just doing someone a favor yeah. by taking that customer paid us to get rid of it so yeah we'll, take it, we'll throw it in our scrap pile and get rid of it and we're gonna have to use up the rest of this black mulch we got to get more for the following job but like we said, we wanted to just show you guys, we don't really like scooping it off the ground. You just see how much more of a pain in the butt it is. When you're working here with the wheelbarrows as you've seen us do, you can literally just break it right out. And the gravity does all the work. And I don't like doing it this way too, because usually uh, we run short right around the pond. And they have to come over and bring like another half a yard. They end up bringing another two yards and we have to eat it up off the ground. Uh, so we got this it looks like it's supposed to be five yards it looks like four to me yeah uh, and it could be five we'll see what happens this mulch spreads out nice though it really does uh, and, uh, not too much to do but uh we'll and then also when you have customers you when you have customers order it you don't always get the right amount or it's it's just not it's not worth it I've from been our doing experience this one for six or seven years now yeah that. Like I said, this is the only client we'll ever let dump the mulch in the driveway. Um, and we charge them for it. Basically, yeah. I think it costs more for them to get it dumped on the ground because I, I don't know, which is what they want to do. Um, I just hope we have enough because I didn't. I don't like running short two wheelbarrows. And then they run over here and they bring us an extra ten wheelbarrows and we're doing more labor than we're charging for. So. Yeah. I mean, it's yes. early in the day, so it's not too bad to scoop it off the ground, but it's it's a lot more work see yeah, it's just easier to get it out of the truck yeah well all right we're gonna we're gonna uh work away at this for a little bit this should take no time at all we'll show you guys what it ends up looking like but you could just see already how much more work it takes to get this done uh from just a physicality standpoint you're gonna wear yourself out doing it this way if you're doing 25 yards of mulch in one day versus doing 25 yards up on the truck <laughs> Check that out. That took maybe maybe 45 minutes max. I'm gonna clean this up real nice. And the uh, this is what we're left with here. that goes we'll clean this up give this a nice line going down and then uh, that'll wrap up this mulch job 
This job, uh, this house actually in the neighbor's house, we cut the we cut the grass, and uh, our dad is right down the street with the mowers, so he's swinging by here next, which is good timing. So we're gonna jump in, cut these two while we're at it. We're already here. We'll help him real quick, um, and then we're gonna move on and get lunch. It's almost uh, midday. Probably, probably gonna be 11 o'clock almost. Uh, get a little bit of an early lunch before we get back out to the second half of the day. But that's not bad so far. I mean. It wasn't that bad. We're not trying to exaggerate the fact of having it dumped on the ground, but I mean, we would much rather prefer the truck because it just, there's no lifting involved. It's all just scooping and, and dragging and raking. So it's a little bit easier on your arms, but that uh, that one come out, came out pretty good for, for the mulch. It's non-dyed, it's just hardwood mulch, um, but that's just, that's a good job here. So we'll move on. So we'll move on to the next one get this grass cut, continue our day on. All right, and here we are now at our uh, third third mulch job here. This one will be nice because we'll work right out of the truck again. Went ahead and got some more mulch after those two, uh, two lawns that we just finished up. So uh, this one, how many yards is this? Three, three and a half. Okay, three, so that'll be... Yeah, it won't be too bad. And, uh, we'll we'll eat this up. We'll see what uh, get some after shots again. Going to be same process. Drop the tailgate, load the wheelbarrows, and do exactly what we've done already so far. All right, we got that one done. Number three of the day came out great. We are going to. Uh, we had a little bit of a twist in plans today. We had another job that was lined up. And we're, we're planning on doing for mulch, but we're gonna push it off till tomorrow. And we're gonna swap out and do a few lawns instead because it's a little bit hot out right now. And uh, it's already almost one. The mulch job stinks that we're about to. Yeah, the other one's a, it's a lot. It, it's not a lot of mulch, but it's a lot of work because it's in a pool area that's tough. But you guys will see that on tomorrow's video. Anyways, we were just doing that job there and we passed another passing house. Right yeah, we're passing them right now. We'll see them up here on the left, these guys cutting. Um, so that property right there, you can see them. They're doing a spring cleanup, it looks like. We got a phone call from them yesterday. 3.30 in the afternoon yesterday. At 3.30 from that house, asking for an estimate. And well, we we don't promise a full day. We, we say 24 to 48 hours is, is our limit, it's depending been, on. It's only been. Yeah, it hasn't even been 24 hours. hours for us to even give them an estimate, which is what they wanted. And uh, somebody else is there already doing it, which thank God that kind of saves us time because we automatically know by by default that that person probably just got 10 estimates and they picked the cheapest one um, and that we were just one of them on the list and they probably had no intentions of hiring us. Uh, it always seems to happen that way. There's a little things in business that uh, if you're just getting started and you pick up on stuff like that where you can kind of tell if they're getting 10 estimates, it's not gonna be worth it because somebody will underbid you um, and it just shows there they probably got a $20 price to cut the lawn there and they went with it like that So we didn't even get a chance to put a bid in which is fine by us because yeah. we don't really feel like wasting time We've been there done that uh, We're pretty good at figuring out now When we know people are just literally looking for the cheapest lawn price or whatever price um, I mean people will underbid by three to four dollars on a weekly cut and they'll go with them because they're cheaper but they might not have insurance. They're gonna end up throwing a rock through your window and taking off because they don't have insurance. Um, or they're working for cash or whatever. I mean, everybody has their own situations they're in. Um, but like Jim said, we have a, I guess every township has like a neighborhood group where they ask for referrals. Um, and people will say, hey, I'm looking for a local landscaper. And all they have to do is type in landscaper on Google and they'll get the real deal companies um, that will pop up. And you could call, but they know that those guys, if they're on Google, they're probably going to be higher up in price. They're all fully insured, though. Um, they all have the best equipment, and they know what they're doing and not going to have any problems. Um, but if they're looking for referrals on there, and there's literally 39 comments in the first hour recommending a different company, and we're 
I guess referral number 40 if one of our customers refers us or whatever we don't even waste our time if we get a call from this neighborhood group that they called hey if someone so-and-so referred you we can almost pinpoint the post that was put on uh, that Facebook group and just know that hey we're probably literally one out of 40 estimates where we live and we learn because we've been on some of these estimates where we would pull up and there'd be a guy given an estimate for lawn maintenance and halfway through the next guy's on his way in it's like people were booking their whole mornings out just for estimates to get for lawn and I I mean the one time last year the guy said who's this he goes oh that's the next guy coming in to give an estimate and I said thank you very much for your time have a good day I didn't even yeah. waste we're not wasting another second of our time because we are just so busy and uh, estimates may be free for us to give estimates. They're not free for us to do estimates, though. It's out of our pocket. It's the fuel cost, the time cost to actually go there. So it's not always worth it um, to, to hit every single estimate. We're not desperate for work. That's the difference is that we are not desperate. We're not trying to squeeze every single job that we can out throughout the day. We don't need to. Um, so it's just those little things you learn. We're trying to be efficient and work efficient and not not let the customer take advantage of you. Our route is just so full at this point that it has to be really worth our time to do a lawn estimate. We're gonna take on as much hardscaping as we can, but in terms of lawn pricing, we know the different towns, how much people are willing to spend and whatnot. I mean, in specific, this street, these people are all getting their lawns cut for 35 bucks and our minimum's 50, so we're not even gonna waste our time on the estimate. Yeah, um, so. so yeah. It may be a little bit different for where, depending on where you're at, but we kind of have it nailed down uh, for Who's going to be a time waster and who's going to be a, who's going to be a, a loyal customer who actually is looking for an efficient business like us to do your work? Um, but that's pretty much that. Sometimes it's annoying, you know, the customers. Everybody's trying to save money. I get that. We we trust me. We get saving money, but um, there's a difference between saving money and kind of being disrespectful, wasting people's time. And I mean, yeah, we're in business, so we do estimates, but you got to help yourself and. You got to make sure that you put your business first and not let these people take advantage of you because they will eat you up they they love to they're they'll save money and they'll eat you up uh that's why a lot of guys go out of business is because they don't know what they're doing in a situation like this and they're desperate for work they end up going for the fluke of a 25 dollar lawn cut and then it's not paying the bills it's not getting them done they got their employee they're paying and then by the end of the day they got nothing so that's why we charge good amount but we're covering our costs we're covering our overhead and uh, people just have to understand that it's a small business you know we got costs we got insurances we have uh, we have payroll we have people to pay we have bills to pay it's just it's no different we can go on with this rant forever and ever and ever but uh, it's not really a rant it's just more of an informative person because I know I'm speaking to a lot of landscapers who watch our channel but anyways we're doing quite good we're gonna just keep going on and finish up a few lawns here and then like I said we'll do that mulch shot tomorrow so it won't be as hot and it'll be a little bit easier on ourselves all right so now you'll see we're at home sitting in front of the truck we did an extra nine lawns today after that um <clears throat> mulch job the third mulch job so yep. we had a pretty good day we got a lot done we did what nine nine plus three twelve plus five seventeen now I, I counted 19 19 yards yeah, of mulch, mulch. 19 yards of mulch and nine lawns on top of whatever dad did dad did another 12 i think okay so that's not a bad day at all solid day we got home by three o'clock put in a good eight hours we're gonna put some new tires on the front yeah we're actually gonna rotate it and put the the backs have about 60 percent or so yeah let's put see this this other tire this is gonna be in another video probably but this other tire the tires were completely bald on the front we're putting brand that new was, ones yeah that was due to bad wheel bearings and bad uh ball joints yeah um which we did them two months ago right before we went back to work and just ordered the tires and did not put them on yet until yeah. now i mean if you look at the back uh i think i did the backs maybe two years ago and the fronts were done three to three and a half years ago they weren't all done at once because they're like 250 bucks a tire of course they wear differently uh being on the front versus the back uh, if we rotated them, which I didn't have time to, they would uh, the fronts would look like the back right now, but it is what it is. There's only so much you can do uh, yeah. in your spare time in a day. And the truck has like 430,000 on it. Almost 440 now. 440, and I know you didn't do ball joints on it, right? We just did. Oh, no. We before, just did. Before beforehand. That, no, because I've owned it for eight years, and we just did the ball joints, and I got it at 380. 
Yeah. So we put 60,000 miles on it in the eight years or so, and who knows when the ball joints and the wheel bearings were done before that. But other than that, I mean, yeah, the motor's been gone through. We've been through this a million times with this yeah. truck. Uh, the uh, the motor, the transmission, you know, everything else is solid. You get in it, turn the key and Calipers, go. Calipers, pads, wheel bearings, U joints, the front U joints with the drive shafts, the drive shaft U joints, the transfer case, uh, the fuel lines, the brake lines, the brake hoses. I mean, you get the point. Every single thing except the seats, the steering wheel, basically the body itself has been changed. Hasn't been changed. Yeah. It has been changed. Sorry. Uh, we did the fuel pump. I mean, the list goes on and on. If you're a new subscriber, this is what we did to this truck. If you're if you've been with the channel for a while, you know that this truck, what we've we've explained pretty much everything we've done to it. But if you're new to the channel, thanks for watching. First of all, uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Um, this truck needs to get painted black. Yeah. I've been following along. That white F-350 got painted black and it came out really, really good. Yeah, it looks good. So we want to do the same thing we did to this one, to that truck. This yep. is a dually, of course, but we want to do the same thing and letter it up. But uh, yeah, you can see perfect. the YouTube's a little bit crooked, but it's all right. You um, can't see it. We did that on purpose because the subscribe is crooked this way and the yeah. YouTube is crooked this way. When you're standing right here, though, it's not as easy to tell that it's yeah. crooked. It looks good going down the highway, down the road. And uh, the rest of it still has to get lettered up. Yeah, but still gonna put the services on the door and whatnot. But uh, this truck will be black. And yeah, we'll get it black. We'll have to strip the logo and everything off of it. And do the same thing we did to this truck to paint it and then re-letter it up. But uh, this is my wife's car. Throw it out in the comments. Where our daughter's about to be born in probably four to six weeks, and not yet. But we're gonna be looking for a three, a car, a vehicle with three rows. Um, not a minivan. She doesn't want a minivan. Um, she doesn't want a Ford Excursion with the 7.3 diesel. We've been pushing that really, really hard to get a rust-free Ford Excursion that we could soup up and put a new motor in and do the whole nine yards like we did with all these other 7.3s. But she does not want a Ford Excursion. Uh, and I also don't want to spend 95 grand on like a new Ford Expedition. But does there anyone have any recommendations for like a, I don't know, everything's expensive nowadays. Even yeah. a pre-owned, we probably could buy like a certified pre-owned with lower miles that from a dealer or whatever three rows brand and model don't really care about we're ford guys but we're not set on that for i mean this is a toyota so obviously we're not set on all fords but we would like to wrap this car probably yeah once she buys a new car um i don't know we maybe want to flip this one over commercial and put it put this one in the business and wrap it up with the lo the logo and everything and this thing's a monster on fuel I'm fuel mileage it gets like 40 something miles of the gallon use this for the estimates and everything yeah is driving one of these that gets like eight miles of the gallon to our estimates uh i don't know just a side note throw down some comments what you guys think uh my wife reads the comments too it'll be cool what, what you guys think if you have a family what your wife drives uh etc so leave a comment uh and yeah, we're gonna get these tires switched over but we don't really need to bore you guys in this video to show you how we do it with the tire machine because you saw us do it to the trailer already it's the same concept uh, but that'll wrap this video up uh, once again we like to spread out our maintenance i guess through the week right yeah maybe an hour here an hour there as it needs it uh, instead of taking a full-on day on like a friday to do this so we're just kind of picking away at it you just get home from work and do have a yeah. few hours here and there to do it everything gets all the mowers and everything gets greased up every week to two or so we check the blades and sharpen them or replace them as necessary but uh I don't know. That'll wrap this video up. Thanks for watching it. If you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We were due for a, lot, a live video, a, uh, a YouTube live at some point. So uh, keep an eye out for that. But put the notification bell on. It'll let you know when we go live. All right, we'll catch you in the next one.